this is Dave. In this video, I'm going to talk about monitoring and logging in Microsoft Azure. This graphic, which I totally stole from a Microsoft document, shows a lot of the issues that need to be considered when doing uh, any kind of monitoring strategy. You know, we start with what are we going to monitor? You know, what kind of things are, uh, which applications, what services are going to be monitored and monitored? And the reason that we do so is so that we can respond when there are issues. And that response might be a, a reactive response, you know, something failed and we want to fix it right away, or it could be proactive. Maybe we've just noticed that there's a trouble spot and the system is running low on disk space or the CPU use is unusually high. We want to fix that. Uh, but the point is we want to find out when things are abnormal. And we want to find out, to, in order to find out when things are abnormal, we need to do measurements because we want to use precise numbers to say, okay, this is the way the system behaves when things are going well, and we want to measure that. And when things aren't going well, we want, to, we want to have some clear definition of what falls outside of an acceptable normal range. And the only really way to do that is to measure things. And we do so really to learn more about the system, to find out you know, what parts are performing well, what parts are uh, not performing well, what parts are being used, what parts are not being used. And we use that information then to improve the system. We want to go and look at the parts that aren't doing this as we expect to and make them better. And that's the whole point of monitoring. When you plan your, your monitoring strategy, you want to think about what exactly are you, do you plan to monitor? What, what services, what applications, what are the metrics you want to capture? Um, you can't capture everything. That's um, It's really not practical. And there's, of course, cost to doing that. Uh, uh, but when you consider this, one of the things you want to think about is what are the SLAs? And the SLAs are the things that you've promised to your customers or to your users. Things like how responsive is the system? How fast are different parts of it going to run? How much uptime will there be? Is it going to be up 99.9% .9 of the time? Or is it going to be up 99.999% of the time? Well, that in advance helps us to determine how thorough we want to be with our measurements. Uh, when there is an issue, think about who's going to be notified and how they're going to be notified and how, and when they're going to be notified. Maybe it's an issue that's a, that's a minor issue and it's enough just to have a report that prints at the end of the week to let people know, hey, something's going on here. Let's keep an eye on it. But maybe it's a critical thing. Something failed and there's going to be catastrophic consequences of that, in which case maybe we want to call someone in the middle of the night, get them out of bed and make them come into the office and fix it right away because our SLA didn't, 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 demands that. Uh, and finally, we want to think about our data retention. We could keep logs around forever. There's certainly an advantage to that, you know, to query them and run reports historically on them, uh, but it's really cost effective to do so. You know, we, we may actually have laws that, that, that comply that, that us to retain data for a certain period of time. But is it cost effective to do that? And we want to think about that and have some sort of strategy. You know, do we want to keep them available for querying, maybe want to put them into some other archival place that's in cold storage where they're available, but they're not immediately available, or maybe want just to leave them after a while. Things to think about. I want to go through a couple of definitions here. The first one is metrics versus logs. Uh, they're often used interchangeably, but they're not the same. They're, they're, but they are related. Uh, a metric is just a number, a number that shows that something that happened within the system at a certain point of time. So for example, the amount of memory being used, the amount of time this, that it takes for a web page to return, uh, a, uh, the amount of CPUs being used. These are metrics. A log is a lot more information. It's information that has persisted periodically over a period of time and kept so that we can query it later, we can exam examine it later. And the reason they're related is because often a metric will identify that an issue has occurred. And once we know that an issue has occurred, we can use the log then to go back and find out historically what happened, hopefully determine what caused that issue. Because often a problem occurs because of something that happened before that. The other thing I want to talk about are traces and spans, and those are two concepts that are related but not identical. A span is just a recording of some piece of workflow. So, for example, the user clicks a button on a web page. We're going to record that event, and that's a span. Um, but uh, a request to a database to either update some data or retrieve some data, we can record that, and that's a span. Uh, the running of an API, 
some the method inside of that API. We may record that it happened or maybe an error occurred. That's a span. A trace is a bunch of spans that are related that are tied together in a single request. So for example, a user clicks the button, that button code runs and it calls an API, which calls a workflow, which updates the database and then retrieves something from the database and that data is returned all the way up the stack. There's a bunch of spans that happen in there, but they're all part of a single trace. We want to tie them together because just one single request indicates one trace, but the next request that comes in would be a different trace, even though it might follow almost identical workflow. So for example, maybe when I click a button, I get an error, but when you click that same button, you did not get that error. We want to be able to distinguish between the two. You know, maybe I ordered a thousand of a thing and you only ordered two, and that that large number caused the problem. Or maybe I clicked the button at two o'clock in the afternoon and you clicked it in the morning, and maybe there's some issue that was happening at two o'clock in the afternoon. We want to realize, you know, what, what's going on. And this is important because sometimes the error occurs in one part of the system. But the root cause cause is in another part of the system. Maybe we forgot to we were passing it, uh, a parameter incorrectly somewhere upstream, and that doesn't cause an issue right away until we try to use that value downstream and realize, oh, it's, it's, it's now it's null or something like that. This picture, another one that I stole from Microsoft documentation, shows the Azure platform and how it handles monitoring. Almost everything I've just talked about before is really about monitoring in general. Uh, this is specific to Azure. With Azure, all the monitoring is unified underneath Azure Monitor. That could be uh, Azure itself, the infrastructure of it, the services, an app service, or database, or uh, um, some PaaS or SaaS service. Uh, it could be a custom code that you've written. All of that goes into the single place, Azure Monitor, under the hood stored in Azure storage. And what's good about that is that because it's in a single place, then we can access it in a consistent way. We can run reports off of Azure Monitor. We can do visualizations. We can send uh, alerts from Azure Monitor. We can send, um, uh, 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 send app information to other applications that we want to call logic app from that. So that integration point tends to be consistent because we've got a uniform platform inside of Azure has that consistency. We also have things like uh, logs right here, and there are some built-in queries here if I want to know uh, response time trend right here. This is my written in language called AQL, and I'll talk about that in a future video. Um, but if I wanted to, this was taking a long time to run. There's really no data recently, but there is a table called traces, which has some things right here, nothing from today, but if I go back, I should be able to see some data from previously. So we've got logs in here. We've got some metrics. We can specify, we'll select the scope. And this is organized by resource group. So within this resource group, I do have a web app. And from that, I can select that and select what metric do I want to measure, CPU time, I want to know the sum of the average and so on. There hasn't been a lot of activity recently, so you won't see a whole lot in here with this, but you've got an active application, you'll see a lot going on in here. And finally, I want to introduce you to Application Insights. Application Insights has all sorts of things that are designed to help you capture important information about your application. I click on Application Insight here, and you can see there's a bunch of applications that, are, that I've created in the past, but in order to get started, I want to create a new application insights application. Come in here and I'll say uh, resource group. I'll just give it a name here. I'll, I'll actually put a brand new resource group. I'll call it GCAST um, App Insights RG. Okay. Resource group is just a way of organizing things and manage them together. I'll give the service a name. Or GK cast app insights. Looks like I spelled it wrong. In I insights like that. Uh, the region I'm gonna put it in East US is fine for my purposes. And I'll use the current one. Um, and then the log analytics source base, I can it's gonna create one by for me right here, uh, or I can select one that already exists. I did 
the only other thing I might want to think about is if I'm doing some reporting, sometimes it's good to have some metadata in here, you know, say this is the department, the finance department or something like it doesn't really do anything to this. It's just if you wanted to sort or filter out that, that on the reports later on, you could. But I click on the review and create tab and tell me if there are any problems that are not validation pass, and I click on create. Once I do this, it only takes a few seconds to create one. Then I have this application insights application, and I can use it when I determine that I want to monitor, say, a uh, uh, web application on Azure, Azure Function or a database. Then when I monitor that, when I create it, then I can tell it I want to monitor it and point it to this application insights application. It would also give me the opportunity to create an application insights application when I'm creating that service itself to create a brand new one. But I think it makes sense to have some unified spot. If you have things that are related to each other, a database, a web app, or an Azure function, and some APIs, it makes sense that you want to monitor them together and keep that information together. So pointing them all to this same app insights application really makes a lot of sense. So this video, I've introduced the concept of monitoring. I've introduced you to uh, Azure monitoring and to Azure application insights. This is David. Thank you for watching. Thank you.